Yeshua just, you, 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 you put this in play. You, you died for us. You, you set us up. May the blessing flow right now in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen and amen. Ready? Here we go. Spiritual warfare encouragement. Okay. Fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6.12 says this. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Come on. It said, what does it say? Fight the good fight. It didn't say retreat. He didn't say retreat here. He said, he said, fight the good fight. Lay hold on eternal life. You need to hold on to what God has given you. You need to hold on when the situation arises and you don't know which way to turn. You need to go ahead. When, when everything's falling apart around you, you need to say, it doesn't matter. Come on, everybody say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You guys don't know what that means. You guys have never heard that before. There's only a few people who know what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter because it doesn't matter because my God is on the throne. He ain't going nowhere. It doesn't matter because I've been through worse. Come on. Come on. I, I, I've been through it back and forth, but God's still faithful to me and I'm faithful to him. My family's going to serve God the rest of their lives. I'm going to be faithful to the Lord. There's going to be a day when I'm going to stand before God and he's going to say, good and faithful servant, come on in to your rest. Come on in to I got something for you. What are you going to do when you stand before your God? God, and you're going to have to give an account, and you're going to say, hey, I did what I needed to do, and I'm going to do more. I can't wait to see him. I'm going to bow before him. I can't wait to serve him even up there. Yes. Seriously, that's one of my things that I want to do. I want to be there serving him. All the angels are going to be around and say, they're going to ask the Lord. They're going to say, what is this guy doing up here? Why is he running around up here? The Lord says, leave him alone. He's serving me. I'm going to be saying, what do you need? You need a cup? You need water? What do you need? You need your sandal shine? What do you need? You need a new garment? I'm ready. I'll go to the dry cleaners up there. Go get his dry cleaners. Come on. Come on, somebody. Whatever, whatever he needs, I'm going to get. And, and you guys got to need to step back because you're not. I, I called it first. I got first dibs on that. You're going to find something else you need to do. Don't allow the enemy to scare you. 1 Samuel 17, 34 through 36. It reads up here. It says, But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when the lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and the uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has to fight the armies of the living God. How many know that? Don't be scared. Come on, somebody say, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Why are you scared? Why are you so worried? When Jesus was on the boat, he looked at the disciples. The disciples were all scared and worried. And what was Jesus doing? Sleeping. Come on, somebody. You guys need to take a nap. You guys need to relax. Come on, don't tell my wife to take a nap because she likes to sleep, boy. She likes to She gets her rest, let me tell you. I wish I could just, just take a nap. But how many know that there's so many things going on in your life and you're so worried you get four hours sleep and then the next day you're worse off than the, night, than the day before? You need to quit being scared of the enemy because the enemy's got no teeth. Come on. He's, he's toothless. Come on. You know, and, and so many times it says the Bible says that, that he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He says he's seeking whom he may devour, but he can't do anything. He got no teeth. Come on. He's got no authority. And he, all he can do is roar. And that's what you're scared of. Every time he roars, you're like, oh, my God, Pastor, I need you. No, you don't. Just look at him. Poke his eyes. Bam. Come on. He's going to mow you to death. Stop it. Come on. You guys, you guys got to stand up for yourself. That's why I always tell you, there's times when out in the world, you stand up for everything. You need to be right there. And yet, when it comes to the church, all of a sudden, the devil comes in. You used to be friends with him. You used to roll with him. Come on. You used to beat up everybody. That's true. Even some of your ladies were bad. 
But here you are, you're worried about the enemy. When you, you got to just tell him, you need to step. Say, step. step. Get away. Get out. Back up. There you go. See, she knows what she's talking about. David had to fight the lion and the bear so he had to be, because he had to be ready for his giant. Some of you guys are going through some hell. Come on. Some of you guys have been through. Come on. What, what, do, they, what do they say? Thick water? What? what? Hell and thick water? Some of you guys have gone through so much. Come on. You guys are still going through it. You have to go through it because you have to learn how to fight. King David was there, and he had to learn how to fight. He had said, I'm going to kill this fool. Come on, I'm going to kill this bear. I'm going to kill this lion. I'm going to kill them all because I know that in the future, i got to kill a giant. It's called exercise. It's called beef yourself up. It's about getting bigger and better. Come on, some of you guys are worried of, of so many little things when you got so much that you have to fight for. You, you see right now all these little things that you're dealing with is nothing compared to what you have to fight in the future. Why? The devil ain't going to let you have everything you want. He's not going to let you have all that money and all that fame and fortune. He's not going to let you do that. He'll come against Solomon. He comes against King David. He comes against Elijah. He comes even against Jesus. Jesus was the chosen one, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Did, you, did he not try to take him out? But we got angels to protect us. We got, we, got, we got so much, the blood of Jesus to protect us. We got the anointing to protect us. We got the glory of God to protect us. Why are you scared so much? We need to fight the bear. We need to fight the lion. Come on, get ready for your giant people of God. When you see the bear and the giant, just, just remember that's a robe sign to your destination. Some of you guys are just worried about those when you should be driving and saying, oh, there's the bear. Whoop, come on. Lions and bears. <laughs> you got to be looking at them and say, oh, I, I'm getting close. I'm getting close. Come on, somebody. I'm getting closer now. I'm getting to my destination. When I see the road signs, pastor said, I'm getting close. Amen. Are you listening? Yeah. Is this on? Come on. I'm ready. You're about to be catapulted to your destiny. I have to say this. Sometimes you have to reinvent yourself. I was just talking to Chris. Sometimes you just got to reinvent yourself. David was about to be anointed. 1 Samuel 16. 1 Samuel 16, 6 through 13. It reads like this. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord anointed, anointed is before me or before him. So we're looking at Samuel. He's looking at this guy and he's big. And he says, Surely this is the guy I'm going to anoint. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. Ooh, we. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For the man, watch this, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks inside the He looks at your heart. Some of you guys are thinking that what, what is God, you know, a man is looking at me, but the Lord says, don't worry about it. I got you. So Jesse called uh, Abedadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Come on. Then, then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Yeah. Next. Somebody say, somebody say next. next. Thus, Jesse made, made, watch this, seven of his sons passed before Samuel. And Samuel said to, to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Wow. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest. Come on. And there he is keeping the sheep. There he is keeping busy. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Good. Taking care of business. Every day. He's taking care of business in every way. What are you doing every day? Are you taking care of God's business? Are you taking care of your business? Are you taking care of what God has given you? Or are you out there dabbling with someone else's business? Hmm. 
there remains a young one. And there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send, watch this, send and bring him. For we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for he is the one. Come on, he is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Let me tell you something. There's going to be a time where everybody in your family is going to go, how did you get anointed? How did you get the blessing? How, how, everybody's going to have to look at you. What, what happened to Joseph when all his family said, well, are we going to bow down before you? Yeah, he gave him the dream. And what happened? They all bowed before him. Come on. Is anybody listening to an encouraging word for that per, for you guys? And he sent and brought him, watch this, Rudy and bright eyes and good looking. Man, does that sound like you? And the Lord said, arise, anoint him. And I, said, I did say I'm going to encourage you, right? <laughs> arise and anoint him for he is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the midst of his brother. And the spirit of the Lord, say the spirit of the Lord, spirit came Lord. upon David from that day. Say from that day that forward. From that day forward. From that message goes out from that day forward. See, the day you decide to make a difference, the day you decide to accept the word, the day you decided to come to church, the day you, come on, decided to come on a Thursday, when you decided to do something, God decided to do something. The Bible says you draw nigh to him, he draws nigh to you. But because you don't even come to church, what's he going to do? So Samuel rose and went to Ramah. Let me tell you something. Some of you guys give up too early. Some of you guys give up too soon. Some of you guys just run the other way when the enemy comes out and starts roaring. Come on. You got to stop what you're doing and say, that's enough of that. No more running. No more coward. No more no more backing up. No more. Uh-uh. No more. I'm going I'm to address it once and for all. You, me and you, come on, at noon. Come on. You draw that line out there. Come on. Get that stick and draw the line. Say, let's go. Come on, get on top of the hill right there. Come on, jump on that hill right there. Let's go. You have to make that decision once and for all. Once and for all, say, that's enough, devil. That's enough. What's he going to do to you anyway? Stop and think about it. Is he really going to come down and look at you and start messing with you? He's busy. He's over in the Middle East somewhere. He's in Russia right now. Oh, so it's demons. Okay, so, so the demon's going to come out. What's he going to do to you? Think about it. The blood of Yeshua covers you. So what's he going to do? What you going to do now? What you going to do? Demon, what you going to do? Let's do Let's go for it. Why don't you just go ahead and address him? See, nothing's worse from a bully than you standing up to him. When the bully's there and he says, okay, well, you know, and then he's, I was just kidding. I remember when I, I stood up to one of those bullies one time. He was shorter than me. And he came out and he's cut in line. I'm, and I just stood up to him. I said, what's up? He said, I don't nothing now. I'm just playing with you. And I go, all right. And that was it. Took care of him real fast. And I ain't going to tell you about the other bullies that I had took care of. But that was back in the day. For the, <laughs> for the Lord does not see what man sees. Say it. The Lord does not see what man sees. So some of you guys, you see some. But man, you really, it's not really real. You give credit where credit is not due. Some of you guys look at the enemy and say, oh, the enemy's got me. He's got not. Man, come on, somebody. You don't got me. You don't got my family. Come on, you got to stand up to him. You got to stand up to your bullies. Come on, you got to stand up by the word. Stand on the word of God. One minute you're a shepherd boy, and the next minute you're being anointed by, by the prophet. One minute you're sitting there, and the next minute, who knows where you're going to be. I see you. One minute here, and the next minute, boom, right there. One minute, I saw you in Baldwin Park, California. And the next minute, I see you in the Big Island of Hawaii. How did that happen? Come on. One minute, I see you out here. And come on, Covina, California. And next minute, you're on a surfboard. Come on. Come on. Whoop. Come on. One minute you're out here in the pool in Glendora and San Dimas, and the next minute 
You got a, you got, what do you got those glass skirts on? Come on, somebody. One minute you're trying to get a business going, the next minute you're hanging out with top CEOs, large corporations. Next minute you're hanging out with millionaires. Come on, somebody help me here. One minute, you're, you're, nobody's going to call on you. And the next minute, can you come over and pray f- for my house? Can you p- come and pray for my brother and sister? Can you pray? Man, we, can, they're going to start texting, messaging you. Can you pray? Because I know the anointing is on your life. See, what happens is we, we, we tend not to, to address, come on, no elephant in the room. We don't, we don't address who we are. We, we don't bring value to ourselves. Did you know that when you get saved, God lives in you? When God anoints you, you're no longer the shepherd boy, but you become the king. Did you know when, when, when you accept God's word, you're no longer, come on, from the back, but you're on the front of the line? Come on, you're anointed. You can't, you can't be doing the same thing you used to do. Your vocabulary needs to change. Your attitude needs to change. Come on, you walk in freedom. Come on, deliverance. You need to change. Even the garments that you wear, you need to change. I don't want to see you in khakis and the cholo shoes. right there. And your Cortez. I don't want to see it. Your khakis and your Cortez. I don't want to see that. I want to see you in some fine clothes. Come on, I want to see you in some wool clothes. Come on. I want to see you in the silk clothes. Come on. And you're like, Pastor, but I don't. Just go buy it. Come on. I want, you to, I want you to dress for success. I want you to be what God has created you to be. I want you, because you're a king. You're a queen. You need to dress like that. You need to stand up like that. Come on. Take your position. Who told you to get in the back of the line? You were never meant to be in the back of the line. Can I get an amen to that? You better read the book of Deuteronomy. Come on. You need to start reading your Bible. Sometimes spiritual warfare is just standing your ground. Ephesians 6.13 says it this way. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, stand. Sometimes you've got to stand up to the enemy. Sometimes you've got to stand up to come on to your problems and your situations. Sometimes you've got to outlast. Come on, the storm. See, the, I said this to a person today, and I said, the enemy, the enemy is a quitter. S- Satan is a quitter. I'm not going to give him any, any, any as, as, what do you call it, accolades. I'm not giving him anything. He ain't getting nothing from me. Say, so he, he's a quitter because he quit on God. He's an unemployed cherub. So that means he has no authority over me. Because I sit in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I'm right there. I sit in the heaven. He's not allowed to sit in the heavenlies because he got no job. He's got no position. Some of you, some of you worried about what I just said. Some of you guys worried. Oh, pastor is all about success. Oh, pastor David claim it. Pastor this, pastor that. No, 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 no. You need to stop. You don't understand. I can care less about this world. I'm sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm in heavenly places. I'm sitting up in the throne. You can keep this world for yourself. You can keep all the money to yourself. I'm going to be sitting in the heavenlies. That's a lot better than being out here. Are you listening to me? You, you, if you know what I just said, you would be so happy. Because God is going to bless your socks. God's going to bless you so much. And I ain't talking about this world. This is nothing compared to what God is going to give you. Streets of gold. Come on, you'll be living in a mansion up there. You'll be hanging out with Jesus. You have the Holy Spirit right there. Some of you guys want to surf out here in Hawaii, but God's going to have you surfing up there in the clouds of heaven. Come on. You, you have no clue what's, what's about to happen in the heavenly realm. You'll be hanging out with all the four living creatures. Man, that's amazing. Some of you guys uh, uh, you know, want to get in the acting field and you want to you be uh, all this actor stuff. But man, up there you're going to have the four living creatures. You ever see what they look like? They're crazier than the alien movies. I mean, look at it. Start looking at that stuff. They got, they got heads, and they, got, they turn different ways, and they got, they got wings. They got eyes in every single part of their body. You got lightning flashing 24-7. You got, you got, I mean, it's bright and 
lightning flashes and thunder and man it's gonna be awesome and you're worried about stuff down here you're worried about your problems and i can't wait to get up there i mean it's gonna be exciting that's all i gotta say it's not about being perfect it's not about being, come on, it's not about being perfect. Some of you guys are, oh, I have to be perfect in order to get the blessing. No, 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 no. Who told you that? It's about being ready. Amen. When your number's called, when King David was out there, nobody, his brothers didn't care for him. Think about it. They rejected him. Joseph, his brothers rejected him. And what were they doing? Keeping busy. Keeping busy. Get ready, because your number's going to be called. And when, it's re- when you're ready and your number's called, Boom. You're going to be advanced. Get, get ready. I'm telling you right now. Get ready for change. Get ready for the next season. Get ready for battle. Get ready for your fight. Get ready for maturity. Get ready for the master's hand on you. Get ready to give up. Come on, the past. Come on, get ready to forgive, forget, and move forward. Get ready. Because if you're not ready, you're going to miss the calling, the high calling. Get ready. Can you imagine if... if, 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 if King David, or at the shepherd boy, if the shepherd boy was hanging out and all of a sudden he decided to take a smoke. Oh, man, in California, they, they do all that. You drive down the freeway, you smell it. You walk down the streets and smell it. Come on. Can you imagine if King David decided to do something different that day? He would have missed his calling. But he, he was, what, what, what did his father say? Oh, yeah, there's one more. And he's what? Attending the sheep. Imagine if he wasn't tending the sheep. He was talking to the ladies, the girls. Come on. He was busy. Come on. Hanging out with the girls. He was busy out there uh, on the horse and and just galloping around. He was too busy taking a nap. Think about what I'm telling you. So many times you're you're so distracted. When God comes over to check on you, you're doing something else other than what you're supposed to be doing. I'm telling you, be ready because God is going to be calling your number soon. We're about to be called. We have been faithful to the Lord. I got that word already, and it's already inside me. We are called, chosen of God. We're anointed. We're appointed. There's going to be, man, so much happening in our, in our church life. Get ready. You're going to miss out. When you should have been, you should have been pastoring. You should have been already uh, advanced. But yet, when the number gets called, when, you're, when you get called out and you're not there, God's going to call you out. Oh, she's not here. Oh, he's not here. Okay, who's next? God's not going to wait for you. You really think there's people waiting on the other side of your obedience. But because you're not ready, they have to be ready. Because if you're not ready, someone else is going to get called. And then they got to go out because there's people waiting. There's people waiting for their deliverance. There's people waiting for their healing. There's people waiting for salvation. This Saturday, we're going to go out. Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be called? Are you going to be chosen one? David was busy. He was chosen. He was waiting for his opportunity. Joseph was ready. He was chosen. He, even, even, at, even when they got him and they put him in jail, he says, I'm still ready. He was working in the prison. Think about what I'm telling you. How many of us, when we would have been thrown in prison for a false accusation, and you'd been in prison, you would have been still serving God. You don't even serve God here. How are you going to serve God in there? You don't even come to church every time the church doors are open. How are you going to be able to, when, the, when your number gets called, said, okay, Joseph, are you here? Yes, sir, I'm right here. We need you to interpret the dream of Pharaoh. I'm ready. I'm ready. Who's ready? Because your number's called, being called out right now. Are you ready? The blessing is being poured out. Are you ready? Come on. God is calling you out right now. Are you ready? Are you dealing with garbage? It's time to let it go. Are you still with unforgiveness in your heart? Why? Let it go. Because God's going to come in. And he's going to say, okay, it's time. Uh, it, it's, a, it's astonishing to me. It's, 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 it's amazing to me that people have left church to go out into the world. There's nothing out there. Come on. The grass is not greener on the other side. It's actually worse. There's snakes out there. There's wolves out there. 
and you're with the master. Ask the prodigal. Should you have stayed or should you go? Should you stay or should you go now? Should you? Should you stay or should you go? That's the big question. Well, you know, Pastor, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm too tired to go to church. But you were going out, coming home late. Oh, Pastor, you know, there's, there's, there's no one in the church. You know, I've been looking around and there's no one in the church. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and find somebody else out in the world. Really? Really? You're going to find a better person out there than in here? Can someone say divorce? You're, you're going to actually go out and find someone better than you can find somebody here? Let me tell you something. Say, I don't even find anybody. That's right. Because you're not ready. It's not time yet. God will put it together. At the, at the least moment in time, boom, you're going to bounce right into your, come on, your spouse. Your king. Come on, your queen. You're going to bounce right into him. You're going to hit him right in the side of the head. You're like, wow, it's right here. At any moment. Hmm. Come on, somebody. First Samuel. Well, let, let's talk about this. Here's a question for you. Question now. It's not just are you ready, but are you honest? Are you honest? Write that down. Are you honest? Let's talk about that. First Samuel 17, 38 and 39. Here it is. Saul clothed David with his armor. Why? Because he's about to fight his giant. And he put on a bronze helmet on his head, and he also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. Say, he not tested them. And David said to Saul, <laughs> I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. He was honest with Saul and says, hey, I can't do it with this. You have to be honest with yourself. You can't do it with someone else's anointing. You can't do it. Come on. You, you, you can't be doing things that you shouldn't about be doing. You can't be putting stuff on that you shouldn't be doing. Come on. Take off the labels, people of God. Take off the limitations, people of God. Take off the mask, people of God. Take off other people anointing that have been laid hands on you that they should have never laid hands on you and push you into, come on, into stuff that you shouldn't have been into. Take off the fake armor. Well, well, that pastor told me I'm anointed and appointed. I don't need you. And go ahead, do your thing. But let me tell you something. When you're ready, God will tell you you're ready. God will give you dreams, visions. God will show you. He said, man, he tried. Come on. Everything else, but he didn't try God. Think about it. All these other people were fake. His brothers would have put on the armor and he would have fought out there. But David said, nah, 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 this ain't, this ain't for me. Why? Because we got gifts. This is not my gift. This is my gift. This is not my armor. This is my armor. Come on. See, God knows what you need before you even ask. He's already set it inside you. Every single thing that you need is inside. Say it. Everything I need is inside me. Then look for it. What happens is that we look, we look for it in everybody else but within us. We, we, we want everybody else to point it out to us except us. We want everybody else to lay hands on us, but we don't lay hands on ourselves. We want everybody else to talk to us, but we never talk to us in, our, in the mirror. When you get up in the morning, you say, oh, you man of God, there you are. You're appointed, man. You're, you're awesome. God, God has truly called you blessed. You got to talk to yourself. The Bible says that King David said he, he encouraged himself. He encouraged himself. There was no one else encouraging. He encouraged himself. You got to tell yourself you're anointed. You got to tell yourself you're ready. You got to tell yourself, hey, hey, don't, just chill. Don't worry. God's got you. We worry so much. I need a word from the prophet. I need a word. You, you don't need a word from the prophet. When you got, come on, when you got, when you got the word of God right here. You know what the prophet does? He gets it from here and gives it to you because you won't read it. Come on, somebody. 
I can see when you need, you, you need a confirmation. That, I have no problem with that. Yeah. But when you have to run to the prophet and say, please give me a word. On, Man, you're lucky I'm not the one that you're coming running to. I say, open up your Bible. Let's see what it says. Yes. Come on. Let's see what it says. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. It's right there. Thus saith the Lord. Read me. Yeah. Study me. Memorize me. Walk with me. Get close to me. For it's a light unto my path. Come on. A lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. It enlightens you. It makes one wise. The fear of the Lord. Come on. Is what? The beginning of wisdom. If you just read this, you don't need, you don't need anything else. Just read your word. Because your word has everything in there. All you bodybuilders, oh, you get your shake, your protein. What are you doing? Making my protein shake, drink. Early morning. What is that? It's your blender. And then throw the ice out. Right? Get a, buy a real one, you know, buy a real blender. You get the old blenders right there, you know. It freezes on you. And so what are you taking? Uh, my protein. But why don't you take your protein in the morning? Come on. I need to exercise my body. When's the last time you read your Bible? Come on, somebody. Somebody say, man, or ouch. See, God did not ask if David was perfect. God did not ask if he had it all together. God did not ask if he went to Bible school, that if he knows Hebrew or Greek. He didn't ask that. All he did was show up when he was working. Somebody say, show up. Show Show enough. Come on. He just wants to know whether you're awake, whether you're ready. That's all. He didn't didn't go to King David and say, "Uh, King David, uh, how many sheep you got? How many you lost? How many bears did you kill? How many lions did you kill? He didn't say none of that. He said, are you here? Are you breathing? Are you awake? He was a worshiper. Amen. He didn't waste no time. And then he decided to kill the bear and the lion. He said, I'm going to go ahead and just do this because I got nothing else to do. He probably enjoyed that because yeah. he got nothing else to do out there. Some of you guys are, I'm lonely. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Dude, are you serious? On, King David just like, I'm going to bust out of song. Yeah. He got his harp out there, started harping, man. All the, all, all, all the sheep are just listening to him, right? He's having his old powwow right there. And you know what I mean? Kumbaya. Anyway, he's having a good time. But why was he doing that? Because he was keeping busy. Because he knew the time will come. He probably had a dream. And here comes Samuel the prophet. He said, hey, Samuel the prophet wants you. He said, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Don't worry. That time will come where God's going to come and anoint you. And you're going to like, it, this is the time. I knew it. Some of you guys are going to be called to open up a business. I knew it. it, it, it there's, all, there's a clock. There's, there's, a, there's a tick. T- there's a clock going on right now. And there's going to be a point in time where all of a sudden he's going to get you. And he's going to put you right there where you're supposed to be. Everything's worked out. Come on. Everything's already. It's a setup. It's a setup. Your whole life is a setup. You honestly think that you, you ever watch the movie? Uh, what is that time? Uh, time thing you watch? What, uh, Back to the Future? It's a setup. You know that, right? You're here at this right time at the right place, right? It's a setup. Amanda was supposed to be in my house because it was a setup. The prophet said, "Oh yeah, he, she, she. What, what do you call it? Uh, not entertainer, not entertain. What do you say? Is that what he said?" The prophet told us, say, yeah, 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 something like that. And I'm just like, and I looked at her like, I didn't know that. The Lord, the, the prophet called her out. Man, the Lord's got to call, the Lord's got to call you out. You're just sitting there minding your own business. Like, nope, nope. What are you doing? Just sitting on the gift. Nope. It's time to get up. I'm telling you, it's a setup. It was a setup. She already knows what she was supposed to do. Now she's over here singing. Oh, and everybody else, oh, she's, a, she's an awesome singer. She was awesome. And you, you, don't, you don't know. She was called out. See, you're being called out. 
There's going to be a situation that's going to rise in your house, and God's going to call you out. Wait till somebody needs you. They need deliverance, and then God's, got, God's going to call you out and say, go over there and take care of business. Somebody's going to get sick, and they're going to call you out and say, hey, it's time. Come on. And you're going to be called out. Come on, somebody. Jesus called the 12, <laughs> and not all of them were perfect. Let's stop and think about it. He called the 12. How many disciples were there when the day he died? That's right, one. What happened to the other 11? What happened to the mighty 11? What happened to them? They scattered. Don't tell me you're going to be there. Everybody's always telling me, if I would have been the, on the other 11, I would have not ran. Right, right. Only one stood. His name was John. He was the only one. Out of 12, he was the only one. He was there, and he was the only one that Jesus says, this is my mom. You're taking care of her because you're the faithful one. He was the only one in the book of Revelations to get the revelation, the book of Revelations. He was the only one that they tried boiling him alive, and they couldn't boil him alive. They tried to cook him. He said, no, nope, you can't cook me. And they finally let him go. He said, we can't kill this guy. Exactly. God's going to choose you to do something great. But you have to be ready. You have to be ready. Jesus called the 12, but, but not all were perfect. God sees what you can't. You judge what you see, but you can't see the reality. Jesus sees through the eyes of love. Man will never pick you, but God already has. You don't know what I just said. Come on. You don't know what I just said. You wouldn't even pick yourself. Your own family members didn't even pick you. And God already has. Because that's why you're here. Before the foundations of the world, he picked you. He poured gifts inside you. He set you on high. While the whole world, well, the yearbook says you amount to nothing. God says, well, wait till we see what I, see what I could do. Let's see, let's see 20 years from now what's going to happen to this individual. When you, when, you, when you thought you were just a nobody, God said, no, no. Mijito, you are a somebody. I put myself in you. Come on, somebody. See, man will never search for you, but God left the 99. You don't know what I just said? The whole world just dumped you on the side of the road, and God went looking for you. He said, I'll leave the 99 because they're just falling asleep over there in church. But I'm going to go ahead and find you. Oh, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. All the rest of you don't know what I was talking about. But now you know because you were the one that left church. You were the one out there running around trying to figure it all out. And God says, no, I'm searching for that one. I'm searching for that one. Why? Because I love you, her. I love him. Because when you thought you were out there sitting by yourself, smoking, drinking, partying, having... Come on, being with all these people. God was right there next to you. He's not afraid of your sin. He's not afraid of your problems. He's not afraid of your situation. He's not afraid of you being out there throwing, you sleeping in your throw up. He's right there with you saying, when are you going to wake up? When are you going to get up? And he's right there waiting for you to say, I'm sorry, Lord. And rededicate your life. Jeez. Man sees no value in you, but Jesus saw you and he went straight to the cross. Did you hear what I just said? Man sees no value in you. When they look at you, they're like, nah, nah. They won't pick you. Nah. Too small, too short, too, nope. King David, nope, nope. Shepherd boy, nope. 
He's not a warrior. We don't pick shepherd boys. They don't see the value. But Jesus, when he saw you, he went straight to the cross. Because he said, you're worth it. He says, you're worth dying for. He says, I'm going to die for you because I want you to come with me in my heavens. I want you to be with me in paradise. Man, how much value is that? He gave up his own son because of your value. You must be very valuable. Think about what I just said. This whole world don't value you. Why are you giving yourself up to this world? Why are you giving yourself up to the world? To him. To all these people. When they don't even value you. You give yourself freely. Stop it. Give yourself up to the Lord. Because he ain't taking advantage of you. He's going to pour himself in you. Everybody in the world, they just want to take from you. But God wants to pour himself in you. He wants to bless you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to give you gifts. Come on. He's a good God. Man sees the shepherd in you, but God sees the king in you. Oh, yeah, I have a shepherd boy. He's outside. You don't want him. I got a, 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 a bit of that. I, I got this guy. I got this one. I got, you know. And the Lord said, nope, this ain't the one. Reject it. Reject it. Nope. Nope. Next. Next. But I got one more. He's, he, and, the, and he said, right there, he's a shepherd boy. He's tending sheep. Mm. See, man sees your frailties. He's this, you're so fragile. You're just there. But God sees the best of the best in you. He doesn't reject you. He accepts you. He loves you. He caresses you. You never know who's right next to you. See, they see the Clark Kent in you. But they don't see the Superman in you. Even Lois didn't see it. And she hung out with them. She wouldn't give him the time of day and she fell in love with Superman. She didn't give him the time of day. You see the Peter Parker, but you don't see the superhero. Come on, somebody. People see the old man. God sees the finished man. People see the washed up, good for nothing you, but God sees the successful you. God sees the blessed you. God sees the anointed you. God sees, come on, it, the best inside of you. When he sees you, he sees everyone that you're going to touch. Close your eyes and say, repeat after me. Lord, show me, mold me, mature me. Let him touch you right now. Father, I just pray over each person right now. Touch them. Touch them right now. I command the blessing over them. I command the anointing over them right now in Jesus' name. I command right now healing over them right now in Jesus' name. Now I pray for their gifts to be stirred up. Somebody's gift is being stirred up right now. I see it right now. It's trying, it's trying to like, it's like, it's, it, the only way I can describe it, it's like a little, a little, um, like a little chick or a little, little uh, animal just being born and it's just like shaking uncontrollably. Your gift is, is right there and, and it's being touched by the master and it's just, it's flopping back and forth. It's, it's moving so fast hard and fast and it's trying to mature it's trying to get out it's trying to flow so i just speak to your gift right now father you've given me this ability you put authority in me to touch the people's gifts right now so i command the gift that's inside you to be stirred up right now right now in jesus name 
right now in Jesus' name. If you're down and out and discouraged right now, I command encouragement to flow through you right now in Jesus' name. I command the blessing to flow through you right now in Jesus' name. I command uh, uh, anxiety, depression, oppression to lift off you right now in Jesus' name. I pray new vision, new eyes right now that you're able to see what God sees, not what the devil is putting inside you. I want that picture to be changed now in Jesus' name. I want you to see brightness, the blessing, not discouragement and darkness. I break that off you right now in Jesus' name. I pray for maturity to flow inside you right now in Jesus' name. I speak light and life inside of you right now in Jesus' name. Father, thank you and praise you, Lord. Walk through the aisles. Holy Spirit, flow right now through each and every one of them. I pray even for our youth, Lord, that they don't know what they're doing, but you speak to them. You bring them dreams at night, Lord. Show them who they are, who they really are. I speak those who have left or out there in the wilderness, that they be called out. Holy Spirit, touch their hearts and their minds. I pray for the, for the families in here, if they have lost loved ones, that they be convicted right now. Holy Spirit, convict them that bring them in. I pray for this Saturday when we go out that people pray and people get healed, delivered, and set free. I pray for salvation. I pray for every word to be on point in Jesus' name. Father, I pray anointing over each person right now that when you lay hands on the people that they be healed instantly healed in Jesus name there'll be a good report father thank you and praise you in Jesus name amen tell tell your neighbor on both sides you haven't seen nothing yet tell your neighbor you, you don't know me you don't know me you don't know me that's right it's a setup God's going to be do something big for you guys, I'm telling you now. Let's go ahead and stand up. We're going to go ahead and dismiss, and we're going to see you on Saturday. We're going to see big things, and then you'll, you'll start hearing a lot of things that we're going to be doing. So you heard one of them, and what was it? There's going to be a, a worship night. We're going to give you more details. We know all